it's Kaylee here for Soying Shane. Thank you so much for joining me for today's video. I thought I would take you along for a slightly different video today because I've had a few questions about it. I thought I'd show you some of my sort of hygiene practices, how I do some of my cleaning in the workshop and how I sterilize my equipment and the containers that I'm going to be using for my bath and body things. So let's go and have a look. So one of the first things I'll do when I come into my shed is I pop an apron on. Now this isn't so much for sanitization or hygiene. There is a little bit of hygiene involved with it um, from my own personal sort of point of view. Um, I like to put my apron on because I get that much um, oils and waxes and things all spilt down myself to the point that I actually do have a pile of clothes in the wardrobe specifically that get worn in the shed and then another pile that do not come into my workshop at all because so I'm likely to get something stained on it and um, once those clothes do get stains on they do move into my sort of soapy workshop um, shed clothes but the reason I actually like to wear my apron is as I said I do get things spilt down me but if I spill something down um, the front of me that really shouldn't have direct skin contact I know I've got that sort of extra layer of fabric between um, my apron and then I've got my clothes and then it's the skin so you do get that chance to kind of take the apron off before that sort of um, ingredient that you're using sinks through the your clothes and onto your skin so it's sort of like a layer of protection for me um, in terms of hygiene I do tend to keep um, my aprons very separate in the two areas that I work in so I do have aprons which are specifically for bath and body products so making soaps making the moisturizers any of the body sprays and that sort of thing and then I have another sort of pile of aprons which are specifically for candle making and that is because often when I'm making candles I'm getting soy wax and stuff all over my hands and I wipe them down my apron front and then I don't want to bring that that apron into where I'm making bath and body products and possibly create a cross contamination by a little piece of soy falling from off my apron into a moisturizer so I always make sure that I have got the two very separate so that we're not getting that sort of cross contamination it is very hard when I'm working in an area with both of them but any little thing I can do to try and um, prevent that cross contamination does help so I do have separate um, aprons for each area of my workshop now the other thing I like to put on is a hat. Now um, you guys have all spotted that I've got my matching hat to my apron and I, I did kind of go a bit silly on that. So Boo from Moo Boo's uh, Melts and More sent me this sloth um, apron and I have bought myself a couple of others from Pick of the Scrunch and I'll leave links down in the description box. I've got one that's got some donuts and one that's got some llamas. But while I was doing that, I decided I also wanted to um, get some different hats. Now, prior to getting these um, fabric ones in, I was using the disposable um, hats, which are these things here. And I bought them in a, a big pack. I think there was a hundred or, or something in there. And they are meant to be disposable. You are only meant to wear them once and then get rid of them. I am naughty. I do generally wear them for a whole week before getting rid of them because at the end of the day, they are disposable. The, the tops of them might break down, but it does have elastic in there, which um, I don't think elastic is very biodegradable. So I usually try and wear them for as long as I possibly can, usually about a week before changing them up. But I decided I was getting quite low on my box and I thought I'll have those for backup but I wanted to get something that was a lot more reusable something I could wash and I found these scrub hats um, on Etsy and I'll leave links to her below I was super impressed that she actually was using the same fabrics that I'd just purchased all these aprons in and the one that um, Boo has sent me so I decided to splash out and have a little bit of fun and match the two now I do make sure I'm wearing my hat whenever I'm doing um, bath and body stuff with my PCOS that I have my hair is actually prone to falling out from the actual root balls not just snapping so I always make sure that I've got my hat on to make sure my hair is well contained and is not floating around so that is for me an absolute must be wearing my um, my hat now what we're going to do first of all now that we've got that sort of dress code out of the way is we're going to start um, sanitizing my bench tops 
So what you may have actually seen on some of my vlogs is when I am running my sink full of water and then I pour in something from out of this container and this is just some household bleach. Now to do most of your sort of um, sanitization or sterilizing of workbenches, it is best to work with a 10% bleach solution. Now I know you guys just see me run the water into my sink and then roughly pour this in. It is because I have done it that many times, I know where my sort of markings are on my sink but I will show you how to do this so that you can actually make sure that you have measured it out properly. So today I'm going to fill up the little sink. I've just got myself one of my um, one of my measuring jugs. The numbers have almost gone but I do know that up to this line is one litre. So if you want to be really precise about this all you need to do is fill up your jug. I am using a sort of a, a warmish water to do this with. So I've got one So that is three litres that I have put in here. So if we want a 10% solution, I'm now going to need 300 ml of bleach to do that one with. So just push down on the cap to get it to come off. And then really have run out of numbers on here. That one, there's a faint line across here that will be my 300. So I'm just going to pour in my bleach and pour that into my water and there we have our 10% bleach solution so just give that a bit of a, a mix around and because this jug has actually had neat bleach in it um, I'm going to pop this one through the dishwasher so whenever I am actually wiping my benches down to make um, lotion, I like to start off with a, a brand new chucks or dishcloth. So I just pull myself one off my roll and then pop it into the water. Give it a good bit of a swish around. Now I don't completely wring this out. I want it to be still quite wet, but I don't want it dripping. And then it is time to start wiping these benches down. And I make sure that I come back regularly and actually clean out the cloth. I'm um, just so I'm not spreading dirt too far along my bench. Don't forget to also do your backsplash as well. And I'm also going to wipe down my scale. Okay, so now that I've actually wiped my bench down with the bleach solution, I do want to wipe that bleach solution back off again so we don't get any sort of bleach into the products that we're working with. So what I'm going to do is on the bigger side of my sink, I'm just going to run some plain water. This again is warm. I've just got myself another new chucks cloth to get that wet and I'm once again going to go wipe all the benches making sure that I'm wiping up all of that sort of excess bleach solution. bench is now actually clean and ready to start creating but the next thing we want to do is have a look at how we're going to sterilize the equipment that we might be using so when you're creating there might be lots of different pieces of equipment that you are going to use to make your product and not all pieces of equipment can be sterilized in the same way so there's actually several different methods and sometimes it's about working out what is easiest or best for you to do in terms of how much space you've got to do your sterilization and sometimes it's about what's working out what is best to sterilize certain pieces of equipment with because putting this through the dishwasher 
is going to create you more um, issues than putting this through the dishwasher. So as just suggested, one of the ways of actually doing sterilization is through a dishwasher if you are lucky enough to actually have one in your workshop. Um, the reason why dishwasher is quite a good way of sterilization is because it gets really hot and having that really hot water run through get everything nice and clean and then you leave it to air dry and once it's dry then you can start using it and it should be nice and sterile. The only issue with doing that, I know with my um, dishwasher, the shorter cycle on it that is actually a proper cleaning um, cycle, not just a rinse, is 126 minutes. So that's two hours. That means I need to have at least a two hour prep time before I can start making things. So putting things through the dishwasher really isn't very uh, isn't very time management or very good time management way of doing your sterilization. But I do tend to put all of my stuff through this, um, the dishwasher um, after I've used it just to make sure it gets that really good clean. Now if you don't have a dishwasher or if you just don't have time to do that sort of dishwashing aspect, then the other ways is making up a big bucket of a bleach solution. And again, you'd use a 10% bleach solution like we did for cleaning the benches. What you need is a really big container that will hold all of the pieces of um, equipment that you're going to use so your bowls your spoons your spatulas and everything else you fill this bucket up with your bleach solution put all your items in there and let them soak for a good 10 to 15 minutes and then as you pull them out rinse them off really well with hot water to get rid of that bleach and then leave them to air dry and this is quite a quick method of doing it you probably then only need about half an hour to an hour's worth of prep time to make sure that your items are all sterilized. Um, but there are certain sort of things that you cannot sterilize in this way. One such thing would be the shaft of your stick blender or if you're using an electric be beater you can't sort of sterilize the tops of them in any sort of water or bleach solutions. So what I tend to do in that sort of case is I either get my sponge that I've had in my bleach solution and I just go around wiping everything down with my bleach sponge. It doesn't do the same as allowing it to actually soak but you do manage to get rid of a lot of that sort of um, bacteria that could be sitting on there causing an issue. So once I've got that all wiped down I then grab the cloth that's been in the clean water and I give that a really good wipe down as well. So then that has actually sterilized that. There are other sort of instances if you are actually working and you've dropped a piece of equipment or you've realized you've actually not um, cleaned up a piece of equipment, sterilized it ready for creating and you have to go and pull it out the drawer. There are other really quick ways of being able to sterilize your equipment and it is through the use of rubbing alcohol and I actually need to make my rubbing alcohol up so we're going to go and do that now. So in my workshop I've got several of these sort of spray bottles and they all contain a alcohol and water mix except for this one which is actually 100% alcohol. This bottle here which is pretty much empty is my 70% alcohol which means that 70% of it is alcohol and 30% um, of it is water. Now the reason behind this is that you actually need different strengths of alcohol to do different things. Now to do cleaning and sanitization, you do not use 100% alcohol, you use 70% alcohol. The reason behind it is that by having the water mixed in with the alcohol, it doesn't have that immediate evaporation effect. So the alcohol can actually stay on the surface for that little bit longer, helping to get to all the bugs and bacteria and lift them and clean them away. Whereas when you spray with 100%, that alcohol, the minute it's exposed to air, is going to start evaporating and it can't grab hold of that bacteria and clean it away. So your 70% is what you actually need for cleaning. Um, you may also hear things like 90 or 91% which is what most people like to use in their bath bombs. My 100% is what I use when I've got a really stubborn grease mark on my bench and I actually spray the 100% alcohol onto greasy patches to break down and dissolve that grease so I can actually wipe it away really easily 
easily. It is also great if you have got sticky labels on glass jars and things like that and you're trying to get that sticky residue off. I find spraying a bit of this on it and then wiping it down really helps to remove any sticky marks um, from off labels and things like that. So if you've got um, containers that um, your suppliers have stuck a label to, um, you can get them off easily with your 100% alcohol. But what we're going to do is we're going to make up the 70% because this is what we need for sterilizing certain pieces of other equipment and some of our containers. So making up our 70% solution is really easy. Basically we want to work out how much volume our um, container has and then we're going to weigh out 70% of our alcohol and 30% water. So when working out how much liquid you need to make to go into your bottle, you can't just rely on the fact that it is a one litre or a thousand mil bottle and then expect to be able to weigh out a thousand grams worth of liquid. The reason being is that only water has a like volume for weight ratio. That is one gram of water will equal one mil of water. Most other substances have a different, what they call specific gravity, meaning that you'll either get get more or less in terms of weight to um, volume. In the case of alcohol, in particular this one, um, if you were to measure out 700 grams of alcohol, you are going to get more than one litre of alcohol poured out. So if you are going to fill your bottle up based off of mill, make sure you are then weighing it out in mills. Otherwise, if you are working in your um, grams, which I like to do because I find it actually gives me a better ratio, um, don't make a thousand grams because it's going to be too much to go in it, that one litre bottle. I'm actually going to stick to making 500 um, grams worth of product for this one today. So let's start getting this one all measured out. So to make this into a 500 gram solution, 70% of 500 grams or 500 times 0.7 gives me 350 grams. So that is what I'm going to pour out into my jug now. What I'm now going to do is top this up with my 30% water, which is 150 grams, or we can just leave it at 350 and pour up to 500. Now that I've got all that weighed out, I am going to just simply pour this straight into my container. So what do I use my 70% alcohol for? Well, I use it for all sorts. I will use it on my benches as well. If I've already gone through and done a really big bleach clean before making something, I've made a product and then I'm going to start a next one and just need to do a very quick tidy up, I will spray my benches with the alcohol mix um, just to clean in between so we're not getting a whole heap more bleach into the um, bench because it does actually get quite strong in here if I've used a lot of bleach and it can get a little bit heady, headachey kind of thing. So I use the alcohol in between um, just to keep things nice and clean. It is also things like if you are making something and you realize that you haven't actually sanitized a teaspoon or maybe you've dropped your spatula and you need to get a new one out the drawer. I, whatever I pull out the drawer will get a quick spray with the rubbing alcohol and then it will get dried down with a, a clean microfiber cloth and then I can actually safely use that in the product that I'm using, which is really important when you're doing things like lotions and other products that have got water in where you don't want any contaminants coming in. Even though everything comes out of my dishwasher and gets put away, so it kind of has been sterilized, with it sitting in the drawer for a couple of days in between uses, it can actually build those bacteria back on them. So I will then actually wipe them down with the rubbing alcohol if I need to pick anything up as an emergency. Now some people will say to leave um, spare sort of tools that you want to use in a, a bucket on your bench that have got bleach in them. I don't like doing it that way because I don't like having the possibility of getting bleach into one of my ingredients because it can actually affect the pH of a product. So I like to wipe it down with the rubbing alcohol. Now the rubbing alcohol is also really good for actually cleaning and sanitizing some of the containers that we might be using. So just before we get into sterilizing our containers, I wanted to share with you a little tip that I was taught when I first moved into Outback Australia. 
I was told to always store my bowls and cups and things in the kitchen upside down so we didn't end up with things like centipedes in them and it's kind of flowed through into my everyday life even in the kitchen in the house everything gets stored upside down so you can see all my jugs all of these containers are all actually upside down so if we get a bit closer there I store them upside down now the reason I actually do that these days is not because the centipedes and earwigs and all those sort of things but it is actually to keep the dust from out of them so I even store all of our coffee cups and bowls and everything in the house upside down just to keep the dust out of them and it's just one less issue that you have to worry about I do still actually sanitize them every time I go to use them but by keeping them upside down um, it does mean that there is less dust contaminants in them. Now let's get on to actually sterilizing some containers. So when it actually comes to making our products, there are so many different containers that we can actually use to put our products into. And just as there are so many different containers, there are lots of different ways in which we can sanitize our containers as well. And there are certain containers that you should not be sanitizing because it is actually going to create more of an issue if you do try to sanitize them over not sanitizing them. We'll start off with the easiest type of container to actually sterilize and that is a glass jar. These are the easiest because they can withstand heat and they, you can actually have several different ways in which to sterilize the glass part of your container. Now, as I mentioned earlier, if you are lucky enough to have a dishwasher, that is one of the best ways to actually do your sterilization. You would throw them all through the dishwasher on a hot wash. If you have a dishwasher that happens to have a glass wash, that is the best sort of cycle to pop them through on because they will actually come out nice and dry as well do not put the lid in with your hot dishwasher because it will warp them and you will not be able to get it back on so if you do have a dishwasher throw them through the dishwasher well put them through the dishwasher and allow them to dry um, through their heat cycle as well if you don't have a dishwasher one of the best ways to actually clean your um, glass jars is to fill a container with very hot water as hot as you can possibly get it boiling if you can Fill it up, pop your glass jars in, let them sit for a while as you would do if you were making jams or preserves. And then you can, once the water's cooled down, you can pull the jars out and then leave them to air dry. And that is a really good way of actually getting them to be nice and clean. Um, don't put them in a bleach solution because you don't want any bleach contaminant in there actually affecting your... Um, your product you don't want that smell to cross over into your products if it's not cleaned out enough um, you can also spray these with alcohol you so you can give them a good spray you get yourself some of your rubbing alcohol spray in there and then wipe it out with a lint free cloth so a microfiber that doesn't actually leave any lint behind with the lids as I said do not put them into hot water because they will actually warp what you are probably best actually doing is just giving them a quick spray if they've got these um, these seals on the inside take the seals out give them a spray with some alcohol and allow them to dry and then you can pop the seal part back in it and then your jar is ready to be filled so the next type of container is the um, the very touchy plastic containers. Now I do unfortunately have to use plastic containers for some of my products, either A, because they're not suitable to go into aluminium, or B, because I'm actually not insured to use glass containers. So I actually try and use these um, clip lock jars. They are a number one PET, um, but they're a really thick, heavy duty plastic container, which people can actually wash out with hot water and then repurpose and reuse these jars. Um, as I said, they can be washed out with hot water, so that is a really good way of sterilizing them. I probably wouldn't put them through the dishwasher. If you are going to be washing these with water, you do need to take all of the metal work off it, so you're not going to be encouraging any um, sort of rust that may grow if the water isn't wiped, uh, dried off it properly. Um, and the other way you can actually um, sterilize them is by spraying them with the 70% rubbing alcohol and allowing them to air dry or wiping them clean or wiping them dry with a lint free cloth and then you also have these other um, containers here these are a much thinner PET container 
and these do not tolerate heat so you do not put them into hot water otherwise you will warp them you might not be able to see that they've warped but when you go to put the lids on they just will not fit um, or you may end up with the lid not kind of fits but you don't see that it's got an air sort of gap in there and then it actually contaminates your product so the best way of actually um, getting these ones nice and sanitized is to spray them with the rubbing alcohol and allow them to air dry or wipe them out with a lint free cloth so the next type of container that you may use are your aluminium containers and I really like these. I've been slowly converting over to aluminium to try and get away from the plastics. The reason I really like using the aluminium containers is not only because they are recyclable, um, generally when you buy them they come with the lids on and this is how they come out of the factories so you know that no one has had their fingers on the inside of that container so in reality that you don't really need to sanitize these when you get them if you do feel that someone has been manhandling them before they've come into your possession all you need to do is spray them with a little bit of rubbing alcohol and let them dry out or again wipe out with a lint free cloth but I do really like the aluminium containers that come with the lids on because I can be pretty sure that the inside of that container is going to be nice and sterile with no sort of um, fluff and hair and all those bits and pieces on the inside. So let's talk the more trickier sort of things to sanitize. Basically if it looks tricky to sanitize do not sanitize it because you are actually going to end up with a lot more problems by trying to sanitize them than if you actually just trust that they have that sort of minimal contaminant in them. When it comes to actually putting out your stuff in con into containers, there actually is a safety amount of contaminant that is allowed in a product where it will still actually remain safe by standards. And it is all to do with how much bacteria there is per inch and and that sort of thing and it can only really be tested through labs but there is a sort of point where you cannot get all contaminants out of a bottle or a tube if you try spraying your alcohol in this bottle chances are it is never going to dry fully and because that bottle has got or your alcohol has got water in you have introduced a water particle into your bottle and you do not want that to stay in there but the chances of you getting it to dry are going to be very very um, slim the same with your sprayers there is just no way that you can actually safely sanitize these sort of um, things as well as your tubes when it comes to bottles tubes sprayers uh, any of your disc caps that you might be putting onto bottles don't worry about um, sanitizing them because you are going to have more issues with them just trust that when that has come off the line it's going when they make bottles they basically get the piece of plastic and this is actually a recycled PET bottle so they've actually taken um, PET that has been put into the recycle yards they've taken it melted it down and then created a new bottle so I really like these bottles in my range um, basically they get a blob of plastic and then they blow it like they would with glass to make this shape and then they cut it off the top so basically there has been no human touch inside of that bottle they are then um, boxed up so that they are then um, sealed so that there should be no contaminant actually in there so you just have to trust on the manufacturing processes when it comes to bottles tubes sprayers and everything else and resist that urge to sanitize them there are a number of things that you can actually do when it comes to purchasing your containers and then storing your containers to make sure that you don't have to worry too much about sanitization of them before putting your products into them. Make sure you are buying your containers from a reputable supplier. Now when it comes to making any product, basically the packaging is the most expensive part of putting your product together. So you want to make sure that that um, packaging is the best that it can be for the price that you are paying. Now as easy and tempting as it is to go and jump onto places like AliExpress, Amazon and eBay, be very very wary about buying from places like this because quite often they're not handling those supplies in a very hygienic way and you can often tell because they come and they've got dust on them and they feel really dirty and things like that and then you know that your containers do need to be sterilized 
as expensive as it can be to go to the suppliers you know that they are actually buying direct from the manufacturers and they have very little handling in between they basically go from the manufacturer to the supplier and then to you so there should only actually be three points of contact with the containers when you're going through these other third-party places you can have four or five different contacts before it actually gets to you which does lead to extra contamination of the actual product so make sure that you are going to the suppliers to get them and when you do go to the suppliers try and buy in the biggest quantity that you possibly can so for example if the supplier sells it as 1, 10, 100 and then a really odd number like 362 if you're buying one, it means that they've actually split it out of the pack that they've got from the manufacturer. You have no idea how it's actually been stored, whether it's been in a closed container, whether it's been out in the open. You don't know how many people have touched it in between um, it being put on the shelf, how many times it's been moved before it goes into your order. Buying in a lot of 100 is probably a little bit better in terms of these companies are going to buy in their big cartons of these um, of their containers and then they're going to bag them up to a hundred just to make it nice and easy for them to pick them so you know it basically comes in it gets picked into a bag of a hundred and put onto the shelf and then it goes into your order so there has actually been some handling of that product before it gets to you if you buy in those really odd numbers so like 362 generally that means that when the, the manufacturer has packaged up the containers into the box they could fit 362 just into that box and they seal it up and if that is how the supplier is selling it to you it probably means they've taken the that box off their carton of goods that arrived popped it on the shelf and then popped it into your order which means there's been no actual handling of those containers now when I do go and buy my my jars I try and buy them in that sort of biggest amount that I can and some of my jars I actually now go direct to the manufacturer as well and I get them sent in because that I can actually get them in those sort of really big quantities um, these little jars here are one such jar I have to buy them in lots of 500 I believe it was but it came directly from the manufacturer and I know that the apart from the manufacturer I have been the only other person who has touched these jars so I do know that those jars don't need very much sterilization. So whenever you do get your containers in think about how you are going to store them once they are in your workshop. For me, I get my containers in and I pop them into these containers up here and I've got them all labelled according to what is in each of those boxes and by keeping them in those boxes it means that there's no dust or dirt can actually settle on them in between use. I will get other containers, for example these ones here. These are my metal bottles that I put some of my sprays in. They all come in their little wrapping here and I leave them in the wrapping as awful it is, as it is getting all this extra wrapping with the um, containers, it does keep them nice and safe and nice and hygienic for when people do go to use the products that get put into them. Now as I said I do buy them in bulk so when I've actually filled up the containers on that shelf and I've got nowhere else to actually put the extras, I keep them in a, a box that is actually all sealed up so again no dust and things can get in them or if I have bought them in smaller sort of lots and they generally come in their own wrapping I make sure to keep them in the wrapping just to make sure that no dust or anything can settle onto them as well. So I hope you've enjoyed today's different type of video and have been able to pick up some tips and tricks about sanitization and working with your work area, your equipment and with your and containers as well. We may have a couple of other really strange videos like this popping up over the next couple of weeks. Our weather here is just being really unkind to the whole soap making thing. Um, my oils are not getting below 30 degrees Celsius throughout the day even when I came out to my work um, shed this morning. I had some oils that I made up the day prior about 7 o'clock in the morning and at 7 o'clock at night they had not dropped below 30 degrees and when I came out this morning and actually measured the oils again they were still sitting at 28 degrees Celsius which is just too hot for me to actually soak with. So f until our um, humidity disappears which is going to not be this week I know that 
we might have a few different videos I should have a soap making video hopefully for this weekend I did have a go at another soap and um, I think it may have worked we will find out but we may have a couple of other sort of stranger sort of videos coming up between now and when the weather cools down so if there is anything that you would like me to show you leave them down in the comments um, section below and I'll see if I can create a more business style um, working style of video for you so thank you so much for watching today I hope you have a great week and I will see you for the next video bye